Bella Vista Community Television presents Bella Vista and Beyond. Today our hosts are Nancy Noyes and Mike Cleary, and we will be talking about the Bella Vista Historical Museum and cheese. And now to the studio for our program. Welcome to Bella Vista and Beyond. I'm Nancy Noyes. Today, we are privileged to have Jill Werner, who's a remarkable woman. She, among other things, is a docent at the Bella Vista Community Historical Society. Thank you for being here with us, Jill. Thank you very much for inviting me. Jill, what exactly is a docent, and what are some of your duties and responsibilities? Well, at the Bella Vista Historical Museum, we don't have any paid staff whatsoever. We totally work with volunteers. And we ask the, uh, a docent is a person who will, they're basically a tour guide for the uh, visitors. They will open the museum at the beginning of the day and they will help the visitors with whatever they need, with information or with guidance. Uh, and with information and close up the uh, museum at the end of the day. Sounds great. Well, tell us about the museum. The museum is a, it, we really have a fabulous little local museum. In fact, we had a museum uh, expert come in one time and apparently when he walked in the door, he said, uh, this isn't what, what I was expecting at all. He was expecting kind of a dark, musty old place like many little local historical museums are. In fact, we've got a fabulous local museum. Um, we had, it's light and bright and we have all kinds of information about uh, Bella Vista, starting with the Native Americans and going on up through our current time. So, um, great exhibits, and I hope that people will come and see them. Well, why would somebody want to come to the museum? Well, to learn a lot about uh, Bella Vista because we have such an incredibly unique history. Uh, we started out as a summer resort and then kind of went into a, a retirement uh, destination and then it kind of became a bedroom community and now we're, we're morphing into something even more than that. So uh, I think that to understand that where we're coming from is a wonderful way to, to feel comfortable in our community when you come here for the first time. Excellent. Well, can you give us a brief history of Bella Vista? Yeah, Bella Vista was started in 1915. There was a couple named the Bakers uh, who had this vision of a, a summer resort here in the Ozarks. So they stopped up Little Sugar Creek with a dam and created Lake Bella Vista. Um, but within a very short time, they figured out that they really didn't know what they were doing and they really didn't have the money to do it. So within about a year, they put Bella Vista up on the market and by 1917, it was purchased by three brothers named the Linebarger brothers. Well, the Linebarger brothers had already developed a place down in Texas, so they really knew what they were doing. And they took the summer resort concept and developed it even further. Mm -hmm. They broke up the properties, and at that time, Bella Vista was a very, very small place. It was just mostly centered around the area around Lake Bella Vista. And people built their cottages, uh, summer cottages and cabins on them, uh, generally very wealthy people. Uh, and the resort was only open between Memorial and Labor Days, oh. which a lot of people don't realize. So uh, that concept kept up uh, until 1952 when they, it, things were changing with the way people vacationed at that time a bit and it was kind of declining but a man named E.L. Keith bought it in 1952 from the Linebarger brothers and he put more time and attention into the resort and turned it into more of a family resort uh, and it stayed that way uh, for 12 years and then he sold it to John Cooper Sr. Cooper's a very famous name in Bella Vista who had purchased a lot of the farms around uh, Bella Vista going north to the Missouri border and he had an idea for a retirement destination. So he did that for a long, long time and but in 2006 
the um, they decided to uh, the residents decided to incorporate into a city. So that's where we are now is the city of Bella Vista. Great. Well, I know that Bella Vista means beautiful view. Mm -hmm. Who named the city? Well, there was a woman. Uh, well, this goes back to 19, the end of 1915, beginning of 1916. Uh, there was a woman named Clara Crowder who won a contest that was put on by the the bakers to name the place. Uh, and she had moved down here from Kansas with her husband and they, they lived in Bentonville originally, were working and living in the Massey Hotel in Bentonville and then eventually bought another hotel in Bentonville and she passed away in 1924. Oh. Well, I think that it's just a wonderful name for a town, it just really is. Mm -hmm. So can you describe some of the exhibits currently at the museum? We have uh, a number of wonderful uh, specialized exhibits. Uh, one of them is on the Native Americans. Now there were never any permanent settlements of Native Americans here, but we do find evidence of them coming here either to use for their hunting grounds or to come and get the specialized stones to make their sharp edge tools. They came from other parts, uh, either from Missouri or other parts of Arkansas. Um, we have a, a special exhibit on Wonderland Cave and uh, that was an underground nightclub in uh, Bella Vista that held 2,500 people and was very famous in its day. We have, uh, goodness, things on uh, the, the old community buildings that were here. We have things on the Cooper era that, uh, like how they built the lakes. I guess people don't realize how they built the lakes here because they're all man-made. Um, golf, we have things on golf. Faye Jones, the uh, architect who designed the uh, country club and other structures here. We also have, as of a year, almost two years ago now, we moved a genuine settler's cabin onto the property, which you can go into and see, uh, that was originally near the Highland Gates. And uh, we're very, very proud of the settler's cabin. Wow. Well, speaking of the Wonderland Cave, mm -hmm. I know that there are posters which depict the t one time a year that black staff and maids were allowed to go into the cave, the nightclub, and dance. Tell me about that specifically. Well, you have to remember this is a long time ago, and the, they called them the Emancipation Dances. Uh, they started in 1920. Um, and they were for the black staff that, uh, from the hotel and the restaurants and also uh, any private staff from the uh, people who were, had brought their own uh, staff down here in the cabins. So it started at midnight. And they all, I know, after the regular dancing was over, uh, they allowed the black people in in order to have the emancipation dance. And they dressed up. This was their night to shine. And they, they loved to, to show off how well they, they looked and how well they danced. And they would charge the white people 25 cents to come in and watch how the dances were supposed to be done. <laughs> Well, that's really interesting, I think. So what about Dog Hill? Could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, Dog Hill was, uh, it's up next to the Goodwill in the town center area. It is one of the original community buildings. Realize that some of the, um, well, we, we didn't have the roads here that we have now, you know, way back when. These are just farming communities. So it was kind of broken up into little neighborhoods and we didn't have large buildings back then so these little community buildings acted as the church and the school and whatever else they needed it for Doug Hill was one of them oh great but this is one that everybody could see because it's still there <laughs> and there's a cemetery behind it you can still get there just drive through the Goodwill parking lot and you can go back 
Well, I think you told me the last time that one of the reasons why it's called Dog Hill is because there were no roads, as you mentioned, and people had to dig steps into the rock and into the earth in order to get up to the church or to the community building at that time. So um, now let's talk about the cabin. It also sits on the property. Mm -hmm. What is it and where did it come from? And when was it built, especially? Well, we know that the property, okay, the, the property that it was sitting on originally is just past the Highland Gates. Uh, if you go there and you try to turn up Glasgow Road, you will find that there's a little patch right at that turn up that has no, nothing sitting on it. And that's where the cabin oh. was located. Now, when John Cooper was going to develop the Highlands uh, you know, for the retirement houses, he was going to tear that down. But the man named Paul Parrish, who was one of the founders of the museum, uh, stopped him and he said, would you give that cabin to me? So they carefully labeled all of the logs and they tore it down and he took it to his house uh, and he wanted to rebuild it behind his house, which is uh, back in the Lake Avalon area. Unfortunately, all the markings wore off, and it, it took him about a year to figure out how all the pieces fit back together again. <laughs> and he had that uh, behind his house. He used it as a wood carving studio. Uh, but he passed away in the late 90s, and they sold the house to um, a couple named the Butlers. And the Butlers are the ones who donated the house to us. Oh we were able to actually wrap the house and have it transported intact down to the museum area. And it's sitting there now, and we have it beautifully decorated. Even. Great. Well, where did these items come from that are in the house, in the settler's cabin now? They were all mm -hmm. donated. They're all donated by uh, people here in Bella Vista. And did you say that there were period items that would go Oh, with absolutely, this? absolutely. The woman who decorated our cabin uh, is uh, the Carol Phillips, and she happens to be married to one of the co-presidents of the uh, museum. But she has a master's degree in, I believe it's cultural antiquities. So she knew what she was doing, and she decorated it as if it were for a a bachelor, a, a single man who is living there by himself. And if you go into the cabin, you'll realize why it's just about big enough for one person, uh, which is strange because the when they moved in there, they had the family had four children already, and then they grew to a family of eight children. But by then, they had expanded the house. Oh, right. Well. On the property, there is some other equipment. Can you tell us about what the large wagon-looking thing is? Well, it looks like a wagon, but what it really is is a manure spreader. And it's from a farm, that an original farm that was over in the Blowing Springs area and was donated to us by the family. Oh, great. Well, as a volunteer coordinator for the museum, do you need any volunteers at this time? Um, we probably could use another volunteer or two for being docents. Um, I, I wear many hats there, uh, and I was all geared up in the spring to start managing volunteers for all these wonderful events we were going to have, and that didn't happen, obviously. But uh, we can always, we lost a number of volunteers this year simply because they didn't want to come in and get exposed for one right. reason or another. So we, if somebody is wanting to come in and be a docent, they can certainly give us a call and uh, we can talk to them about it. Great. What are your current hours of operation? Uh, we're, since uh, we reopened uh, at the end of October, uh, we're not doing what we used to do. We used to be open five days a week, uh, but now we're only open on Saturdays and Sundays from 1 to 5 p.m. Great. How can people locate your website? My website, which, by the way, I maintain, <laughs> is bellavistamuseum.org. And that Bella Vista Museum all is one word. Well, thank you, Jill, for giving such an interesting peek into the Bella Vista Historical Museum. Well, thank you for having me here today. So.
I'm Nancy Noyes, and you're watching Bella Vista and Beyond. We will be right back. Stay tuned. Bella Vista Community Television presents our sponsor appreciation. Audrey's Resale Boutique, located in Forest Hills. Find the perfect item for your home decor. Beautiful collections, quality clothing, and more. Make your dreams come true at Audrey's. Welcome back. Here is our host, Mike Cleary. Thank you for tuning in to Bella Vista and Beyond and for checking out the businesses and local organizations in Northwest Arkansas. We're a little cheesy every once in a while, and so today I invited my special guest, Jessica Kehi, the big cheese in Sweet Freedom Creamery in Bentonville. Welcome, Jessica. Yeah, thanks for having us, Mike. I appreciate so it. You're the big cheese. You're the cheese maker. I am. I'm the big cheese. Yeah, <laughs> the head cheese monger. Yes. <laughs> sure. You have a store on 8th Street in Bentonville. We sure do at 8th Street Market right there in the south, south end of the market, Sweet Freedom Cheese. Great. Now you're the big cheese. How long have you been involved in cheese making? Cheese? I, I fell in love with cheese after I took a class back in 2012. It just, it was like magic alchemy. <laughs> Seeing liquid milk turn into firm curds for the first time and I just fell in love and I knew it's what I wanted to be involved in doing for just the rest of my life. So you have a background in engineering. This is completely different. Totally avenue. different. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. You can take the girl out of engineering, but can't really take engineering out of the girl. So I, I still kind of approach uh, small business and the cheese aspect uh, with a lot of problem solving skills, but it's a, a very, very different career field. So now what got you interested in cheese making in the first place? Well, I, I loved cooking and after about a decade in engineering, I thought, you know, I really want to do something maybe more with my hands and creating something and being able to talk to, you know, more people. And I just fell into this class. And like I said, it was, it was instant, instant love at that point. I just, I knew, I knew in my heart that that's kind of what I wanted to do. And so I really wanted to find a way to bring great cheese to Arkansas and and here we are great great now you have not only the store but also you have classes on how people can make cheese in their own homes right absolutely so we don't make cheese at the 8th Street Market um, we we procure cheeses as a cut-to-order cheese shop um, but I, I still love the cheese making aspect of it and I love imparting that to people um, to be able to do in their own homes. And so we, we had on-site classes and now they've converted to virtual. So you can join us, you get a kit with everything that you need to make cheese. And really after about a two hour session, then you'll have instant gratification of fresh cheese that you're able to eat right then. So how involved is this? If I said, you know what, I wanna take an online cheese mm -hmm. class is it something that you have to really prepare for or a lot of equipment for? Nope, uh, no, no experience necessary. It can be <laughs> definitely intimidating and there are a lot of cheeses out there that are very kind of complicated to make or, or take a little bit of time to make because you might have to age them for a while. Uh, but the, the cheeses that we do in our classes, we want people to, to feel accomplished whenever they have completed the class, like they have a cheese that they're able to consume. So we provide all the, all the necessary ingredients that you would need or kind of odd things that you might not be able to find uh, kind of in the immediate area and then we'll have a list of things that you would need in your own home kitchen just simple stuff like pots and spoons to have ready and then you just log on um, to the the link that we send you on zoom and then that's it just kind of follow on through the class easy cheesy good easy cheesy that's right so if you're homebound or quarantined and you have lots of time on your hands and you want to learn how to do something different and new Absolutely. you have an opportunity to be a cheese maker absolutely at home and yes. these classes are available all the time right yes so we uh we do private classes on on request and on demand so if you want to have say 
interesting birthday party or uh, bachelorette party bachelorette <laughs> we, birthdays bachelorettes bar mitzvahs we do them all um you name it and uh corporate events as well so if you want to have a have an interesting get together um that's maybe a little bit unusual but still safe and social distance then we, this is a great opportunity and we do not just cheese making so if you maybe don't want to get your hands in into the cheese making aspect of it uh we we offer other things like cheese and wine tastings uh, all virtual as well so you have your in your store a variety of cheeses you're certified as what is the north the only one or only other one in northwest in North arkansas yeah, i think one, a of, cheese one of two in the whole state of uh, <laughs> yes a certified cheese professional so we are um a licensed i'm a licensed uh, certified cheese professional i guess you could say um and we we impart that on our our mongers there uh, at the shop who are are highly educated in all things cheese so you know everything between the difference between gorgonzola and gouda absolutely Absolutely, yes. So and we you're can, the go-to girl. We can educate you on that too. You can either come into the store and you know buy cheese and be done with it, or if you want to ask questions, um, we're there to answer anything you might have, uh, you know, burning burning questions about cheese. Good. And yeah. you also have cheese baskets available. You brought one to show. Sure. Yeah. So we're we're we do cheese, but we're we're also a gourmet store. So we have other things, everything that you would want to put together for maybe a nice cheese board for yourself or a uh, you know, small gathering. Um, we sell wine and beer, um, the select assortments, and lots of other delicious things. But we have started doing gift baskets as well, um, which you can find on our website. Good. Mm -hmm. Speaking of website, how do people get in contact with you about your cheeses or about events or about some of the classes how can people contact you absolutely so our website is sweetfreedomcheese.com and you can go to our shop and see some of not everything is available that we have in store we do have a listing of our inventory so people can just click that on the website and see what we do have available pretty much everything in the store we try to keep it updated um, that you can print off review online um, and uh, um, Yep. <laughs> sorry, well, you what the question was. You mentioned something earlier <laughs> when we were sorry. talking about yeah. a phrase I had not heard in a long time, cheese fondue. Oh, cheese fondue. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. Um, yes, we, we do carry other things as well besides just kind of gourmet ingredients. We have uh, cheese making tools, but also just kind of cheese interesting tools, including fondue pots, um, which is very on trend now. So it's coming, coming back. And I don't understand why hot, melty, delicious cheese ever went out of vogue, <laughs> but it's back in vogue. And uh, we, we have fondue kits, so you can just uh, grab those off the shelf, super easy. Or we can cut cheeses as well that in, in the right proportions for however many people you're going to feed yeah. and then provide you with, I call it, our no-fail fondue recipe. So if you follow the instructions, you'll have just beautiful, silky, delicious fondue. So Valentine's Day is coming up and not only cheese, but chocolate fondue with like a cheese board and wine. You also have beer and wine available. We as do, well. yes. I think we're Arkansas's smallest beer and wine store. We're very, very <laughs> tiny. Um, so we're very select in what we carry. Um, so kind of interesting things that you don't, you know, you're not always able to find. And we're able to give you advice on pairing. So say you have a, a nice Pinot Noir at home that you want to pair, then you can just kind of engage in conversation with us and we'll tell you what we think uh, will go well with that um, or vice versa. Uh, you, you have a cheese that you want to pair with a nice wine, then we can direct you to that as well. Sure. Yeah. So someone is coming home from work and they stop into your shop mm -hmm. and say, I want to pick up some wine and cheese for a special event or just at home with their spouse. You're, you and your cheese mongers are the go-to people in order to give them recommendations. Absolutely. You can just tell us basically how many people and if you want it to be the main event of cheese or maybe just an appetizer, and then we can do all the rest for you. Uh, we can taste with you at the case safely, or you can just put it in our hands and we can select cheeses for you and all the ingredients and accompaniments really for any budget. Good. Now, you also, you're originally in Fayetteville or you're still in Fayetteville? So I live in Fayetteville. I'm from Hot Springs. <laughs> I, uh, I came to Fayetteville for my um, college experience, my engineering degrees, and uh, my husband and I live there. And uh, But the shop, we commute up into uh, Bentonville, just right down the road. Good. Now, 
2020 was probably difficult for a lot of businesses. How did you fare in 2020? And what do you expect for 2021? Sure, yeah. I, I try to be uh, an optimist, but a realistic optimist. So uh, I, I know that it's going to take a while for things to settle back down. Um, so, you know, 2021, I, I would like to be optimistic that things will kind of return to normal. But I think we're forever changed in a lot of ways. Um, and one of those is the virtual classes we talked about. So I think that we'll be able to, to do those. But before, people probably would not have been as interested in a virtual kind of class scenario. They wanted to come to our shop and in our classroom setting, kind of hands-on, one-on-one, or as a small group. Um, but now we're able to reach a lot more people, and you don't have to kind of worry about leaving your home. You could be in your pajamas, and no one will be the wiser. <laughs> um, and so I think those will continue, you know, doing um, and being able to to reach more people and and just kind of you know small business. You throw things at the wall, see what sticks and what works and what doesn't. So we're we're kind of leaning into those things that we did well in 2020 um, in terms of kind of pivoting for COVID. We closed our little dining room, um, which was popular at the time, and have kind of converted that so but we're able to do like I said the virtual classes and and more more things for the public to to keep everybody safe so for instance large platters uh, we used to do cheese and so you can order a cheese and charcuterie board from us uh, we've started getting smaller sizes so if you're just one or two or four people you can get those from us now and in, in those types of quantities um, we we do kind of some delivery on demand for gift baskets um, all also doing curbside so very safe so you can contact us um, tell us what you'd like we'll cut everything take your payment over the phone and then bring it out to your car good good I was raised in Wisconsin and I talked to some <laughs> of the other crew in the studio here and Cheese curds are not very easy to find in this area. You, right. you carry cheese curds. You must. We absolutely do <laughs> carry cheese curds that are uh, actually made, uh, you know, just north of us uh, in Missouri. And um, we carry some other things, too, that you're not going to be able to find in, in kind of the, the local area anywhere else. Um, and some of them are definitely from Wisconsin. So we have people that visit us and say, gosh, I haven't, you know, I haven't seen this in 20 years. So it's really fun to be able to kind of cater to our customers and provide things that, you, that really the community at large is looking mm -hmm. for. And if I've never tried this before or something like that, if somebody goes in and they're kind of intimidated by some of the names of the sure. cheese, because there's a lot of cheese I've never tried because I don't know what it is. <laughs> There's a lot of cheese out there. Um, so you're not alone. Don't be intimidated. Um, don't worry about being able to you know, pronounce the names. Uh, all of our cheeses are labeled and have little tasting notes on them. And we can provide all sorts of information in terms of tasting profiles and what that cheese is going to be like. But we also are a try before you buy store. So we're able to kind of <laughs> safely take people at the case and um, do individual tastings if you'd like to try the cheese before you buy it. Mm -hmm. And also these events that we were talking about mm -hmm. before, how popular are they? Are these getting more and more popular now? I think absolutely as people are getting more familiar with doing online uh, online uh, types of meetings like Zoom and Microsoft Teams, they're becoming more popular and just very easy to do. So we try to make it as easy as possible to sign up and to get your kits and then to log on um, through either our Facebook page or our website. Um, you can find us on Instagram as well. Yeah. So you can ship the kits as well, not just we, pick up. We or... currently don't do shipping or we do some shipping just kind of on request. Um, some of the kits are more perishable, like shipping right. milk is a little tricky, um, but we do, we do some small amount of shipping so people can contact us, us directly, um, you know, if they want to send, say, a gift to someone. Um, but as far as the kits go, we, we have the pickups at our location, and we also partner with a bakery called Rockin' Baker in Fayetteville, and they serve as a pickup location for us as well. Good, good. Yeah. So Valentine's Day is coming up for mm -hmm. gift baskets or for Chocolate wine fondue. and cheese pairing, yeah, fondues, all kinds of options for special occasions and also just something to do. If somebody says, you know, I've never tried cheese making or I've right. never tried tasting this particular type of cheese. You're the go-to gal and you're mongers. Absolutely. Cheese mongers. Absolutely. <laughs> cheese mongers. I'm sure you have cheese jokes all the time. All the time. Uh, I love them. So if you have any, you know, send them my way. I feel like I've heard them all, but uh, every now and then I get a new one and it's just great. So. Well, Jessica, I really appreciate you being with us today. The, the big us. cheese of Sweet Freedom Creamery and 
people can contact you through your website, through email, or through phone? Absolutely. Info at sweetfreedomcheese.com. You can call us at the shop. We're there Monday through Saturday. Great. Thank you. Appreciate you being with us. Thank you for being with us at Bella Vista and Beyond and for tuning in to the program where we focus on businesses and organizations in Northwest Arkansas. I'm Mike Cleary, and for the crew here at Bella Vista Community Television, have a wonderful day. Remember, you can see this program on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at various times. You may also see this program on youtube.com by going to Bella Vista TV. This has been a presentation of Bella Vista Community Television. Thank you for joining us.